Well, as some of you already know, I've been working in software development here in Japan for about six years now. And there are some pretty interesting differences on how we code here, especially on how the keyboard works, which I'm gonna explain in this video. In fact, I got so used to the Japanese keyboard layout that I choose it even when I can go for some other layout. And yeah, I'll also talk about when do they actually use Japanese inside their code and some very annoying problems that are specific to coding in Japanese. So let's start by talking about how the keyboard actually works. First, let's take a look at the layout of the keyboard. And don't let these Japanese characters in the keyboard deceive you because no one actually uses them. Not even the native Japanese people. At least I've never seen someone use it. So how do we write in Japanese? Well, we just use the English characters to write and then switch between alphabets. And if you didn't know, there are a few types of alphabets in Japanese. There's the Romaji, which are not actually Japanese characters, it's just the normal English characters. There's the Katakana, the Hiragana and the Kanji. And in addition to all that, there is also the half-width katakana and the full-width romaji. Usually, we just use the spacebar to switch to the right form of the word. For example, if I write kanji, it will automatically switch to the right way of writing kanji. But actually, there are other words with the same sound. So to switch to the right word that we want, we can just press space and see the options. And we can also switch between alphabets by pressing Ctrl and one of these keys or the F keys from F6 to F10. And when we want to accept the text, we just press enter. We don't actually need to press space for every word that we write. Usually the keyboard will do the right choice for the phrase that you want to write. For example, if I want to write here, You can see that we didn't have to press space here. It automatically chose the right way from the beginning. We just need to press space if the automatically suggested word is not what we actually want to write. And if I just want to write in English, I can switch to the English keyboard by just pressing this key on the left of the spacebar. And you might have noticed that the spacebar on this keyboard is actually smaller than most keyboards. And this is true even for gaming keyboards like this one that I have here. And that's because of these two keys here. If I press the left one, I switch to the English keyboard. And if I press the right one, I switch to the Japanese keyboard. By the way, you can also use the Japanese keyboard on a normal English layout keyboard. You just have to use a different shortcut to switch between keyboards. I believe it's Alt Shift on Windows and Control Space on Mac, which I disabled because Control Space is to trigger auto suggest for coding. Oh, and one of my favorite things about the Japanese keyboard is that you can search for special characters, emojis, or even text faces with the keyboard. For example, if I just write Yajirushi, I can search between a lot of arrow special characters. Same thing for Maru, Sankaku, Kome, Kanashi, Ureshi, Bikkuri. So yeah, that's it for the Japanese keyboard. Oh, and if you watched until now and you're enjoying the content, don't forget to leave a like, it helps a lot the channel. So where do they actually use Japanese in their code? And no, they usually do not use Japanese characters on their variable names. Even though it is possible for some programming languages, and I've seen it being used before in a project, most of the time they usually just use English characters on their variable names. But they actually do use Japanese words written with English characters on their variable names sometimes. And I think it's understandable. Let's say we're building a web app that has a lot of information about schools and stuff. And there is a page that the name of the page is Semongako, which means like technical school. In that case, they might want to use, for example, Semongako data on the variable name for this page. And that also gets used on the website path and on the database columns as well. And they do use Japanese characters for comments and for commit messages. And the interesting thing is that a lot of times they do not have a, like a very specific rule about this. And some people actually like to write comments in English. So you have like a mix up, like some comments are in English, some comments are in Japanese, some commit messages in English. And yeah, there are also some special characters that they like to use for some UI UX stuff. For example, they like to use circles as a placeholder for input. They also like to use these different brackets to emphasize some words, maybe on a validation message or something. And I've also seen some articles that says you shouldn't use the red asterisk as a mark for required stuff. 
instead you should use the word his. And yeah, there are many differences in UI UX best practices. But if you were to talk about that, this would take a very long time. If you are interested in knowing about the differences on the design of a Japanese website, there is a very cool video that I've seen before on the Answer in Progress channel. It is a very well researched video and with a lot of cool data and a very good editing as well. I highly recommend the video, I'm gonna leave the link in the description if you wanna watch. Ok, but finally let's talk about some annoying problems that are specific to writing code in Japanese. And one of the most annoying for me is that the Japanese characters have a different width even with monospaced fonts. For example, you can see here that if I write this in the comments and if I want to align these words here, I can't do it because the Japanese characters have a different width and it's not even double the width, it's like 1.5. So things get misaligned and if, if you use the arrows to go up and down, you can see that the cursor doesn't even go in the same direction. If I go to a markdown file and I write in English, the code formatter will make the markdown table evenly aligned and very well spaced. But if I change the header to Japanese and I use the code formatter, you can see that it gets misaligned and if I use the arrows to go up and down, you can see that the cursor doesn't go in a straight line. This annoys me quite a lot. Another problem is the full width space. Now at least VS Code shows us when we're using full width characters. But some IDEs don't. And if you have a full width space on the, your code and the code is having some problem to compile, it is literally an invisible problem. I remember taking a long time to debug a problem like that. It's even worse than forgetting a semicolon. Because it's literally invisible. And another problem are validations. When you're gonna build input validations with, with regular expressions, you need to know exactly what you want to allow. And I've faced a lot of problems with validations on other websites. For example, my name has a V in it. But in Japan, they do not have a V sound. But they do have a katakana letter so that people can write foreign words with it. But since this is quite an uncommon character, sometimes they forget to add it on their validation. In that case, I need to write my name with a B instead of a V. Funny thing, when I was trying to order a pizza on the Domino website and trying to make my account, my name wasn't passing the validation and I had no idea why at the time. So I just opened the dev tools and I searched for the validation, deleted it and tried again and it worked. They weren't using the same validation on the back end. I felt like a hacker this time. And yeah, that will be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe as well. See you in the next one. Mata ne!